Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you all, depending on where you're joining from. Thank you once again for joining the AMR Community of Practice for today's session. This will be our last session this month and for the year 2022. My name is Yongo Athi, and I will be your moderator for today. In this session, we will have a one hour long presentation, which will include a question and answer session or segment that will come at the tail end of the presentation. Throughout the session, we encourage you to share your questions and comments via the chat box, and we will attend to all these at the end of the session, and also we'll attend to some of them simultaneously through the technical team that are supporting this session. Please note that there is simultaneous language interpretation from English to French, and this can be accessed via the interpretation icon on the toolbar at the bottom of your Zoom screen if you're using a PC. Uh, please click on that interpretation icon and select either English or French uh, language based on your preference. Welcome. During today's session, our theme for today is advancing AMR surveillance in surgical interventions. Uh, in this session, we discuss and explore surgical infections and related antibiotic resistance profiles after bellwether procedures. Uh, the bellwether procedures is, are any procedures involving laparotomy, cesarean section, or treatment of open long bone fractures. Recent estimates, if we look at the Lancet 2015, we realize that 30% of the global burden of disease can be treated with surgical interventions. And as such, there is need for effective monitoring of the access and rational use of antibiotics, which are used in provision of surgical procedures to help decrease the risk of postoperative infections among patients. And this is key in alleviating antimicrobial resistance. In this session, we explore the Liberian experience on antibiotic resistant profiles from surgical site infections. Uh, the surgical site infections are notably the main causes of healthcare related infections in low income countries with significant impact on patient clinical outcomes. We are privileged to introduce to you today's presenter, who is uh, Mr. Pacific, and he'll be presenting on surgical site infections and, anti by, and, and antibiotic resistance profiles after bellwether procedures in rural Liberia. This is a mixed method study. Our speaker today, just like I've mentioned, is Mr. Remy Pacific Mtanganya, an experienced pharmacist, a program manager, and a global health procurement supply chain professional with over a decade of experience in global health delivery. Currently, Mr. Pacific works with partners in health in Liberia as a pharmacy department lead. And before moving to Liberia, he worked with partners in health in Rwanda as pharmacy program manager. In terms of AMR, Mr. Pacific is a key member of the network of European and African researchers on antimicrobial resistance, the medical advisory board on LEO project, and he served on the Liberia National Antimicrobial Resistance Surveillance Steering Committee. Additionally, Mr. Pacific obtained his Bachelor's of Pharmacy with honors from University of Rwanda and has a Master's of Medical Sciences in Global Health Delivery at Harvard Medical School, USA. I now, with a lot of humility, hand you over to Mr. Remy Pacific Tenganya to proceed and showcase this uh, important study. Thank you and over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Yongo. This is uh, uh, my pleasure to be uh, joining you today and we look forward to uh, an interactive uh, session. And uh, I look forward to hearing from um, the feedback, uh, comments, and suggestions. Next. Yes, briefly, uh, bear with the procedures include a cesarean section, reparotomy, and repair of open fracture. And according to the Lancet Commission and the WHO, they consider bellwether procedures as 
the, uh, the, the proxy to measuring access to uh, surgical uh, procedures, surgical care in low income countries. And patients who undergo uh, surgical procedures are at high risk of developing surgical site infections. And according to WHO, the surgical site infection rate is estimated at 11% in low and middle income countries. And this has impact on clinical outcomes of uh, uh, clinical outcomes on, on patients who undergo surgical procedures. As this will lead to extended hospital stay, uh, but also increased financial burden, but also the patients we uh, may risk to die. So it's also, there is a risk of uh, mortality. And in worst case scenarios, those surgical site infections will become resistant to antibiotics and other antimicrobials. Antimicrobial resistance will occur when those microorganisms are not able to respond to treatment. And in this case, for our study, we'll be focusing on a particular group of antimicrobials, which, which is antibiotics. And antibiotic resistance occurs when bacteria are no longer able to respond to treatment by antibiotics. And for the facilities that have uh, by, uh, by the bacteriology lab, diagnostic capacity, they, they, they will be able to, to, to conduct a uh, catch and sensitivity testing, and then they will be able to know antimicrobial resistance profile, which will show which pathogens are susceptible or resistant to which particular antibiotic. However, there are common challenges in low-income countries. Most of uh, health facilities do not have the diagnostic capacity, and there is limited data from uh, low-income countries in terms of antimicrobial resistance profile. And then some of antimi uh, ant antimicrobial resistant pathogens are being spread without recognizing it, and this has impact on clinical outcomes, especially for post-operative uh, patients. Next. Uh, briefly talking about my journey with surgical site infections and antimicrobial resistance. I'm a licensed pharmacist who has been working in global health delivery for over than 10 years of, uh, I have, more than 10 years of experience. And my work focuses on two aspects of pharmacy. First, uh, global health procurement and supply chain management, where we want to ensure an interrupted supply chain of health commodities, including laboratory diagnostics, but also essential health commodities, including antibiotics and medical supplies. Moreover, I'm also involved in clinical pharmacy practice where we work with members of the clinical team to ensure effective and safe use of health commodities, uh, focusing on essential medicines such as antibiotics. And the picture here, uh, this is uh, Antimicrobial Stewardship Committee at one of the hospitals uh, in Liberia, a multidisciplinary committee involving pharmacists, medical doctors, nurses, physician assistants to monitor uh, the use of antibiotics. And my research interest said center at the intersection of pharmaceutical epidemiology, economics, uh, policy, and regulations. Next. And we present to you a case scenario of one patient, uh, Maria, the name that we have changed to protect her privacy. Uh, Maria is a 35 year old. Uh, she's married, she has five children. And then she's from a poor family in a very remote area in Liberia. 
they depend on uh, subsistence farming. And in their village, they lack basic infrastructure such as uh, water and sanitation, uh, access to road network. And then when she has to seek healthcare services, Maria will have to work for at least like two hours in the jungle, and then she cross the river, and then she take a motorbike to travel to the nearest hospital. This involves the risks uh, associated, she may have accident, but also it's time consuming because she spends time traveling to and from the hospital, but also this is a high risk for financial burden because she has to have to spend uh, her money and she's from a poor family just for traveling to the hospital, but also accessing health services. Next. Uh, briefly talking about her experience, when she got pregnant and she was about to deliver, Maria traveled to the nearest hospital. Uh, she has to wait for so long because the hospital only had one um, medical doctor who was performing surgery. And then uh, the doctor reviewed Maria, they realized it was a high risk pregnancy. And then they decided to perform cesarean section. After performing cesarean section, they realized the patient uh, was supposed to take uh, antibiotics. Unfortunately, they were not available at the hospital. And then later on, she developed surgical site infections. The doctor prescribed antibiotics, but they were not available at the hospital. And Maria, who is from the poor family, managed to just buy half of the course of treatment. And she stayed longer at the hospital. Unfortunately, they had no diagnostic capacity to confirm which pathogen was causing the infection. They kept changing antibiotics, but it didn't work. Maria decided to move to a very remote hospital, which is supported by an NGO, and she thought she would have good quality services. And then when she reached there, she waited for a short period of time. They had well-trained clinicians, they performed uh, examination, and then they took this, they, they worked with the antimicrobial stewardship committee, and they decided to take the wound swab, they sent it to the bacteriology lab, which is available at the hospital, and then they were able to identify the pathogens which were causing the infection, and they decided on targeted treatment. Then Maria, uh, the wound healed and Maria was discharged just in a few days. Briefly talking about the, the political economy of Liberia. Liberia is one of the smallest countries, uh, the poorest countries in the world. It's, it's located in West Africa. And it's one of the poorest countries, as I said, which has been devastated by civil wars during uh, the 80s up to 2003. And later on, it was also affected by Ebola response, Ebola pandemic. And then the health system in general is, is fragile. And Liberia has 15 counties as administrative divisions. Our study was conducted in Maryland County, which is one of very remote uh, counties and which is located in Southeast Liberia. Next. Then Maryland County, which is a very remote area, that's where uh, we have JJ Dawson Hospital, uh, which is a 99 bed a secondary level hospital, which is serving as a regional hospital in Southeast. And it's very remote and hard to reach. And the region lacks basic infrastructure. You can see from the photos here, uh, poor road network, but also ruined buildings, which have been affected by the civil war. 
and you can see one of the remote village in uh, in rural Maryland County. Next. Our study aimed to assess surgical site infections and antibiotic resistance profiles uh, after bear weather procedures in rural Liberia. And as I said, uh, we conducted this study in Maryland County and we, we collected data and worked on this study from August 2021 to May uh, 2022. Next. Uh, we used a mixed methods uh, approach and we reviewed data from January 1st to December 31st, 2021. And we we're focusing on one hospital, which is a regional hospital, JJD hospital, and particularly obstetric and gynecology wards, then the med medical and surgical wards. Then we collected data from the bacteriology lab. For the quantitative part of our study, we involved adult patients who underwent bare weather procedures. As we said, it's cesarean section, laparotomy, and repair of open fracture. And then for the quantitative components, we interviewed clinicians, including physicians, nurses, and midwives. Next. It was a convergent mixed method study where we collected both quantitative and qualitative data simultaneously, focusing on interviewing healthcare providers, uh, focusing on the clinical management of surgical site infections, but also understanding the process for diagnosis. How do they decide on uh, diagnostic? Uh, and then how do they decide on which antibiotics to use and focusing on the antibiotic use practices, then later on um, their perceptions on antibiotic resistance. After uh, collecting data, we also analyzed data, both quantitative and qualitative data simultaneously. Then we matched the data and we uh, interpreted the data and made recommendations. Next. And uh, during our study, we have identified 435 bare weather surgical procedures which have been performed at uh, JJD hospital during the study period. And then almost 5% uh, of as post surgery cases developed uh, surgical site infections. And then among those, uh, those cases that developed surgical site infections, we had almost like 90% which were performed uh, as surgical site, confirmed as surgical site infections uh, based on the results from uh, the bacteriology lab. Next. And from our findings, the majority of the population was young, between 18 and 20 years old. And then the majority of them were female. And most of them were from, uh, we, we underwent uh, cesarean section as one of the three bare weather procedures. And they were just from obstetric and gynecology ward. And among the samples that were sent to the lab, at least like 90% had uh, confirmed culture growth, and then were able to know uh, resistant, uh, resistance patterns for those particular pathogens. Next. And we realized that the majority of uh, pathogens we identified were gram-negative and uh, Acinobacter and uh, E. coli were the most common pathogens uh, as gram-negative, while uh, Staphylococcus aureus and Coagulase-negative 
Staphylococcus species were the most common pathogens we identified uh, uh, among gram-positive uh, microorganisms. Next. And the table below summarizes uh, antibiotic resistance profiles among neg uh, gram-negative pathogens that we, where we realize uh, antibiotic resistance pathogens are high among the most commonly used uh, antibiotics at the hospital, such as ampicillin, amoxicillin, cravianic acid, uh, but also uh, uh, third generation, uh, third generation uh, 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 antibiotics, uh, cephalosporins, and then uh, uh, antibiotics such as ceftriaxone, uh, cefotaxim, we realized resistance uh, patterns were very high. However, we also had uh, rates are uh, still low uh, among some antibiotics such as uh, ciprofloxacin, uh, imipenem, and uh, piperacin in tazobacter. Next. Uh, we can see from this graph that uh, resistance patterns are still low for uh, gentamicin, ciprofloxacin, cefepim, but also piperacin tazobacter but uh, uh, we can see they are very high for uh, the most commonly used antibiotics, which is really uh, a cause of concern. Next. Regarding uh, the quantitative component, we interviewed physicians, nurses, and midwives, and the majority of them were female and they were relatively young, uh, between 29 and 40 years old. Next. And from the findings, we grouped uh, the three themes that we identified. And the three themes uh, focused on concerns about antimicrobial resistance, then infection prevention and control practices, then antimicrobial stewardship uh, initiatives. In terms of infection prevention and control, um, clinicians were focusing on uh, hygiene and sanitation practices, but also uh, aseptic wound dressing uh, uh, process. Uh, then finally, they were focusing on disinfection and uh, uh, medical, of medical equipment and supplies. Uh, which would really contribute to uh, the prevention of surgical site, the spread of surgical site infections. And uh, regarding antimicrobial stewardship um, initiatives, they were focusing on the role of the bacteriology laboratory, which can really help in um, initiating targeted treatment, and then focusing on the need to improve antibiotic access, uh, but not only access, but also ensuring uh, appropriate use, safe and effective use. And uh, uh, a number of clinicians were also focusing on the need for sufficient and qualified healthcare workers um, from different departments, uh, from the pharmacy department to laboratory, but also uh, physicians and um, nurses and midwives. And finally, they were focusing on uh, public-private partnerships to strengthen uh, antimicrobial stewardship systems, especially in uh, rural, uh, low-income countries. Next. Yes, uh, regarding the first theme concerns about antibiotic use, as you can see from these excerpts from uh, the uh, one, uh, the, the interview by one of the physicians from uh, the JJD hospital. Uh, first of all, they recognize that antimicrobial resistance is a big threat in the region. And they were just referring to cases of uh, multi-drug resistant uh, pathogens, which, which involves 
uh, resistance to like a, a pathogen that will be resistant, uh, resistant to two or more uh, groups uh, of uh, antimicrobials. And then uh, they were just also suggesting some factors that will be contributing to the spread of resistance. Uh, mainly uh, focusing on the misuse of antibiotics, whether it's just uh, underuse or over, uh, over uh, prescription of antibiotics. And then uh, they also highlighted the fact that it's very easy to access antibiotics from private drug stores, which also uh, uh, leads to uh, implications for regressions. And then they will thinking of talking about uh, from their experiences where they have been observing patients taking multiple antibiotics for a long period of time. So they, it's, they are all concerned about uh, antibiotic resistance in this case. Next. And then uh, from one excerpt from uh, an interview with uh, a midwife, uh, they were also thinking about infection prevention and control uh, practices, especially at the, uh, at the hospital, but also uh, thinking of uh, low-income uh, countries in general, where uh, hygiene and sanitation practices can really help to prevent surgical site infections. Uh, they were focusing on the importance of hand hygiene, but also uh, uh, the use uh, of personal protective equipment, such as uh, gloves, examinational gloves, gynecological gloves, surgical gloves, uh, and they really understand the role of hand hygiene and personal protective equipment and uh, infection prevention and control practices to prevent the spread of surgical site infections. Next. And uh, from the interview with clinicians, um, this is just one example from uh, uh, inputs from one physician who focused on the role of aseptic wound uh, procedures uh, to help prevent uh, surgical site infections. They were focusing on uh, uh, like cleaning the wound, the procedures, uh, involved in cleaning the wound, uh, but they are also focusing on availability, but also the use of sterile materials and supplies, which is uh, most of times challenging in uh, low-income countries. And then uh, uh, speaking of uh, regular wound dressings, because it's very important uh, uh, if we have surgical site infections, uh, we need to make sure there is a good plan for wound dressing uh, to make sure that uh, we, can, we can manage the surgical site infection, but also preventing the spread from one patient to another or one patient to a clinician. Next. Speaking of infection prevention and controls, uh, uh, control mechanism. They were also uh, talking about this infection of medical equipment and supplies, and they really understand uh, uh, the role of that uh, uh, procedure in preventing surgical site infections. And we we, we know that most of case uh, most of uh, uh, cases in most of cases uh, they, they are not able to really do it well, uh, either of uh, uh, equipment uh, for sterilization, but also uh, issues uh, such as financial constraints where they would have uh, materials that have been used for uh, many years. And then we think it's really important if we want to prevent the spread of surgical site infections, we need to invest in availability of um, materials and medical materials, equipment and supplies, but also make sure there are systems for sterilization so that there is no spread of uh, surgical site infections. Next.
Yeah, the third uh, theme was about antimicrobial stewardship initiatives. Uh, mostly the clinicians we interviewed, they were really enthusiastic about the use of the bacteriology laboratory at the hospital, which is in a very remote area, in rural area, that uh, where they are able, when they suspect any uh, a surgical site infection, they collect the sample, whether it's a blood for culture or it's just like a wound swab, they send it to the bacteriology lab for culture and sensitivity testing. So they were really uh, enthusiastic about it. And they, they emphasized, on, emphasized on the fact that it is very useful for them to switch from empirical to targeted treatment based on lab results. Uh, and then from this, we know that other uh, remote hospitals or health facilities in low-income countries, most of them do not have the diagnostic capacity. So the treatment is just empirical rather than targeted treatment, which involves uh, the misuse of antibiotics and contributing to uh, the spread of resistance, uh, resistant pathogens. Next. The clinicians we interviewed also recognized uh, challenges uh, uh, in the use of antibiotics, but not only the use, but also access. Uh, most of uh, facilities in rural areas do not have access to essential antibiotics. And when they have them, uh, there are cases of misuse. So they were just focusing uh, on that and how it relates to the spread of uh, resistant pathogens. And they also uh, talked about pressure to, uh, to prescribe antibiotics. Some patients would just uh, uh, influence clinicians uh, in prescribing practices, but also uh, the fact that uh, they rely on empirical treatment where they prescribe antibiotics without proper diagnosis, without knowing exactly which pathogen uh, they are targeting. Next. And lastly, uh, in, in terms of antimicrobial stewardship initiative, uh, they, uh, they focused on the need for uh, both uh, in terms of quantity and quality of healthcare workers. Uh, they feel like there's a need to raise awareness uh, in terms of uh, antimicrobial use, but also uh, antimicrobial resistance in general. And then they feel like once a uh, health facility is staffed with uh, enough uh, healthcare providers who are well-skilled, this can contribute to uh, the, uh, the prevention of uh, just the spread of uh, surgical site infections, but also in general, uh, improving uh, medicine use practices. Uh, and in this case, we're just focusing on uh, antibiotics. So appropriate use of antibiotics to limit the spread of uh, resistant pathogens. Next. Another aspect that is very important is it's about uh, uh, public-private partnerships, which is really, really important because uh, the clinicians we interviewed were focusing on the fact that like in some instances, like the, uh, the government partnering with uh, development partners can really contribute to uh, uh, strong systems, uh, antimicrobial stewardship uh, uh, systems that can really mitigate uh, the challenge of uh, antimicrobial resistance. But also uh, uh, in terms of uh, diagnostic capacity, uh, sometimes like uh, governments may uh, uh, have financial capacity to afford it, and then development partners uh, can work with governments to put systems in place so that there is a uh, strong diagnostic capacity. And then this will contribute to the quality of care, especially in this case, uh, uh, speaking of surgical site infections, this will really improve uh, 
the clinical outcomes of uh, post-surgical uh, patients. Next. In general, we, from our findings, we realize that antimicrobial resistance is um, um, a big uh, challenge uh, in health systems in Liberia. And this is uh, not different from what uh, other studies have uh, reported, especially in the region, in sub-Saharan Africa. And we realize that um, from other studies, but also in line with our findings, uh, most surgical site infections are caused by gram-negative bacteria. And we realize that there is uh, a, cons a big concern about cases of multidrug resistance, where uh, some pathogens such as E. coli, um, such as uh, Acinobacter, are resistant to the majority uh, of uh, antibiotics, which used to be uh, effective against those uh, pathogens. And then the most commonly used antibiotics are no longer effective to treat uh, the most common infections. This will involve the need for uh, uh, the new antibiotics, which would be expensive, but also which may not be accessible to uh, health facilities in low-income countries. Next. And uh, another case of concern is uh, the, the presence of some cases of extended spectrum beta-lactamase pathogens and some cases of campapenem resistant Enterobacteria. So that is really concerning because uh, they are really linked to uh, hospital outbreak, both in developed countries and low-income countries. And they require strong antibiotics that are not available for the public supply chain system. And then uh, they can lead to, more, uh, to cases of mortality. So there is a need to really intervene and make sure that uh, there are systems in place, antimicrobial stewardship systems in place to mitigate uh, the, the, the issue and make sure there is uh, uh, no uh, spread of antimicrobial resistant pathogens, especially these cases of ESBR and CRE. Next. And there are interventions that have been proven to be uh, effective. And we talk about uh, IPC, infection prevention and control practices, but also antimicrobial stewardship uh, initiatives. They have been proven to be very effective in containing the spread of resistant, uh, resistant pathogens. And uh, we know that some of the infections are just uh, linked to lack of access to water and sanitation uh, uh, infrastructure. So in low-income countries, there's a need to uh, increase access to uh, diagnostic capacity, the bacteriology laboratory will be useful in just identifying uh, those resistant pathogens and uh, being able to transition from empirical to targeted treatment. Next, please. Okay, then uh, our study had limitations because we relied on data that have been uh, the quantitative uh, component uh, that relied on data from the laboratory registry. There may be uh, some uh, misreporting errors. And then uh, we use just like uh, data from one hospital. It may not be representative of surgical site infections uh, or surgical site infections at the hospital, but also at the national level, because we're just focusing on bare weather uh, procedures. And then uh, our study uh, used a convergent mixed method, uh, which, which is really a good approach uh, in uh, just gathering uh, high quality uh, data, but also from uh, reliable sources and uh, key informants. Next. 
yeah, finally, we, we have identified uh, high rates of antimicrobial resistance among uh, post-operative surgical site uh, infections in rural Liberia. And this is not only in Liberia, but uh, in the region. So it's a concern. And we know that uh, there are initiatives that can really be useful in uh, um, addressing uh, the challenge of antimicrobial resistance, mainly uh, antimicrobial stewardship practices, but also infection prevention and control. And uh, there's need to uh, generate more data to inform policy and practice, uh, focusing on evidence-based practice. Uh, we need to know uh, local data. We need to have access to local data, which we uh, guide uh, decision-making. And this will have um, a impact on post-operative clinical outcomes, especially in our settings, which are in low income countries. Next. 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 So we are grateful to the team that has really contributed to this study. Thank you so much. Next. Thanks a lot, uh, Mr. Remy Pacific for this great presentation. Uh, to our esteemed participants, we're very grateful for having time to join in. We've seen uh, very interesting discoveries in terms of uh, uh, surgical site infections with suspicion rates of almost 4.6 with the laboratory confirmations to almost 90% at the JJDMH hospital in Liberia. Uh, we, at this point, we like to invite uh, comments and questions that have come away uh, through the chat box, and I will give the present opportunity to address a few questions. Due to limited time, uh, we'll try to address as much as we can. The first question coming from uh, Dr. Abraham Alabi. Uh, uh, Mr. Remy, uh, kindly share your experience based on your expertise in supplies chain, how you manage to uh, help the, assist the facility to have consistent commodity security in terms of essential uh, medical uh, drugs uh, within your facility. I'll give you an opportunity to address that. The second question, uh, so that you go uh, in a go, would be uh, why did you add viruses and parasites in the study of AMR? While when you hear of AMR, all we think about is bacteria. Uh, this is a nice question from Uimana. Over to you, uh, Mr. Pacific. Yes, Th thank you so much. Uh, uh, Dr. Rabi, uh, to, uh, thank you so much for uh, very interesting questions. So the first one, uh, ensuring um, access, but also uh, availability to uh, essential health commodities, uh, including, you know, like uh, medicines, medical supplies, uh, laboratory diagnostics. So our approach has been, first of all, working with uh, members of the clinical team uh, and other uh, members of the paramedical team to identify the needs. That's very important. Identify their needs and then uh, specifications. And then what uh, our role has been just working with them uh, to do the quantification and then to know exactly which quantity they may need. And then uh, this will involve just like a putting in place tracking systems uh, to monitor uh, the consumption data, but also using the data for forecasting uh, for future needs. That's the first uh, step. And then the se second one is just identifying resources, because this is one of the challenges in low-income countries. You may have a good program, you may have uh, good objectives, but if you don't have uh, financial means, and most of those uh, health commodities are expensive, especially for the bacteriology lab, uh, uh, antibiotic discs and medical equipment, they are very expensive. 
So once uh, we have the budget, and then we uh, we work with the procurement team for uh, sourcing them, and then once they are available, we work closely with the team for uh, the distribution, but also monitoring the use and trying to uh, anticipate and uh, always adjust our systems uh, to make sure that we can meet uh, the needs. So most importantly, uh, the planning process involving all our uh, end users at the beginning and then working closely to share updates and information and then identifying the budget, then uh, having strong systems in place for uh, monitoring performance, but also, uh, also ensuring good uh, uh, procurement and supply chain management procedures and using uh, consumption data for forecasting and quantification. That would be my answer. And then uh, uh, another question is about the, uh, the difference between antibiotic resistance and antimicrobial resistance. Actually, when we talk about antimicrobial resistance, we, we are just considering uh, uh, the, all uh, microorganisms, like from viruses, uh, bacteria, fungi, and par other parasites, and then which would be which will build resistance to antimicrobials. Antimicrobials, in that case, would be uh, antibiotics for uh, uh, for uh, the, the infections caused by bacteria, antiretrovirals for infections caused by viruses. So uh, our study focused on antibiotic resistance because our bacteriology lab is able to perform catch and sensitivity testing uh, uh, for infections caused by bacteria. So we don't have the capacity to uh, perform catch and sensitivity uh, uh, for other pathogens, but we hope we'll be able to do it in the future. But currently our study focused on uh, antibiotic resistance but we simply referred to antimicrobial resistance uh, at the beginning because antibiotic resistance is just like one of the sections of antimicrobial resistance. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Mr. Premier Pacific. Uh, at this point in time, uh, we appreciate all your questions and uh, in the constant of time, we will um, uh, try and reach out to you through the chat box, through the technical teams. Uh, we, the, this time we have, we want to uh, um, appreciate your participation in this uh, session of AMR. And we would like you to take a chance to participate in a brief survey that will be displayed shortly uh, on, on your screens. As the survey proceeds, we request all of you to participate in giving your feedback to this session. I would at this point also request Remy Pacific to give your closing remarks and comments as the voting begins in a minute. Thank you and over to you. Yes, uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for to uh, the African Society for Laboratory Medicine for this opportunity uh, to share um, uh, findings from our study that was conducted in uh, rural Iberia. And, and thank you uh, to participants for um, very interesting questions, but also for your time uh, and uh, attention. Uh, we all understand that uh, that microbial uh, resistance is uh, a global health challenge, and uh, it's uh, just a big threat to uh, clinical services all over the world. And we know that low-income countries are highly affected. Uh, I think it's a, a very good oppo opportunity for us to advocate for uh, uh, systems to be put in place uh, so that uh, there are strong systems in place, um, uh, mainly uh, starting from the main uh, interventions that are known to be very effective infection prevention control, antimicrobial stewardship uh, initiatives, and then together we can, uh, we can prevent the spread of resistant pathogens. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot.
Uh, this opportunity we give uh, all our participants opportunity to download today's certificate of attendance, which is displayed on the screen. If you go on the screen, you'll get the today's code. Uh, then you'll visit SLM website under resources and you'll be able to download certificate of participation on today's MR code session. We'd also like to take this opportunity to invite everyone who has not registered to become. So please do look out for future invitations and MR COP sessions. Should you have interesting work on MR that you'd want to showcase in this forum, kindly do not hesitate to reach out to any of us. At this point, point I want to wish you all a great weekend ahead. Until next time, it's goodbye for now. Happy holidays and prosperous new year 2023. Thank you.